every race available for custom characters explained in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Hello everyone and welcome to the video. As usual for these types of videos, do feel free to check the description and pin comment for timestamps so you can jump straight to the part of the video that you may need. In the meantime, if you're still listening to this, if you found this video useful, entertaining or what have you, do make sure you leave a like on the video and also if you are watching this, there's actually a decent chance you're probably not subscribed as about give or take 50% of you watching right now are not subscribed. So do make sure you subscribe. Okay. And that said, I'll go and play the G Fuel intro. Use code kick on G Fuel. Use gold kick on G Fuel. Use gold kick on G Fuel to save one G person off. Now, before we get into anything else, I do think it's worth mentioning at the start here height and body type, as this will affect the stats and damage and maybe lack of damage for your custom characters, regardless of which race you pick. Starting with height. So, with height, the shorter your character, means the faster that they will be, but they will have less health. And the taller the character will mean that they are slower, but they'll then have more health. And for the body type, the thinner your character will mean the stronger the key blast damage attacks are, but you will do slightly less damage in both strike attacks and in basic attacks. And finally, the bulkier or I guess like wider your character means you'll have stronger basic attack damage and stronger strike damage. But you will have a little bit weaker key blast damage attacks. Starting off, we have the male margin race. Male margins have the highest health stat out of every other option in the entire game, at least for custom characters. And because of this, well, they are considered to be the tank option because they will receive less damage the more stamina that they have. And because of that as well, they will receive more damage the less stamina you have, either just having lower stamina in general or having your stamina broken either by a stamina break or trying to attempt a tactical stamina reset. And in terms of strike and key damage, they have higher key damage rather than strikes. Now, this, this is a good option, but in terms of the Awoken skills, as of right now for margins, you have the Kaioken forms, Purification, which is their race exclusive Awoken, Potential Unleashed, and the Beast Awoken. I'll be honest, I would pretty, unless there was like a gimmick, I would pretty much just run Potential Unleashed because <laughs> Purification's fine if you're going to run like a, a gimmick build, maybe. Kyle Ken should not be used on a margin male or female. And the Beast Awoken is decent, but it consumes five bars of key to use. It's got a long startup animation, and you will receive more damage while in the Beast Awoken skill, regardless of which option you pick. But you could maybe compensate because, again, male margins take less well, they receive less damage, the higher their stamina. Moving on now to female margin custom characters. Female margin custom characters have incredibly fast stamina recovery in terms of just their stamina regenerating and also when their stamina is broken either as part of a stamina reset or a stamina break or anything that for, you know, forces them to regenerate their stamina. And this is the reason why you tend to see, especially in ranked matches in Xenoverse 2, female margins with three bars of stamina and something like an evasive that takes three bars of stamina to use like the spread shot retreat i think that takes three bars of stamina off the top of my head i forget because they'll use it then dash and even by the time the attack finishes or before the attack finishes the evasive they've either recharged their stamina in full or almost recharged it is cheap but do you know what it, it is <laughs> a strategy who knows? I may do an updated version of that video. We have to wait and see. Next up, we have probably the most popular race that people will use in Xenoverse 2, that being male sane 
characters. Male Saiyans have lower health compared to other stats and other races in the game, and they have high basic attack damage and very high strike super and strike ultimate damage. They get an attack increase when you have flash and red health, and an additional attack increase if you are in a team match or any sort of mode where you have teammates and if you get knocked out then revived you will get an attack increase after being revived from being knocked out a bit of a cheeky zenkai boost in terms of what awoken skill you should use for a mal sane well if you're a mal sane you're probably going to be running a strike based build so super sane if you don't have any of the god forms but if you do and you're running a strike build maybe super sane blue or blue evolution would work as well beast would also work but once again the beast awoken just takes too long to actually activate and it consumes five bars of key, unlike other custom character awoken skills, at least as of this upload. Will they add more awoken skills after Beast as of this upload? We don't know. So do stay tuned for that. And again, subscribe, because if they do add any more, I will cover it here first on the channel. But with that said, to wrap up the basic introduction to Mal Saints, if you are going to run a basic attack build, Super Saiyan God would be absolutely fantastic to use as an Awoken skill. Up next, we have Female Saiyans. Female Saiyans are almost the same as male Saiyans, but with one major change. That change is that instead of, well, for male Saiyans, you have high strike damage attacks. For female Saiyans, you have high key damage attacks. Same thing as well as having low health out of every other race. You get an attack increase when you have flashing red health and an attack increase when you are revived after being knocked out. Again, if you are in a team battle or any sort of mode where it doesn't end if you get knocked out, if that makes sense, like a raid PvE, a two versus two, three versus two, etc, etc, etc. Personally, well, from personal experience, the Awoken skill I tend to see more so than anything on female Saiyans is maybe not surprisingly enough, but it just feels surprising to say Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, even though you got Super Vegeta for Super Vegeta 1 and 2, you know, with no key drain, and then even Super Saiyan Blue as a sort of bridge between Super Vegeta 2 and Blue Evolution. But no, even after the Beast Awoken, I tend to see female Saiyans use Super Saiyan Blue Evolution evolution specifically next we have male earthlings probably it is subjective but i would definitely say one of maybe even the best race you can pick for custom characters in xenoverse 2 male earthlings have high strike damage and you get auto key recovery which is very 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 useful now again the well Battle Earthlings are considered the, I guess, meta slash tryhard race option because of the X, Y spam on PS5, PS4. It's square triangle, like what you can see on the screen now. Honestly, with this, their unique Awoken, the Power Pole Pro, uh, <laughs> just uh. So you're going to probably run either Potential Unleashed or the Beast Awoken. Kyle Ken, probably not probably not to be honest but out of potential unleashed and the beast awoken more so than anything else unless you aren't taking things seriously or you're just memeing or have you you're gonna run potential unleashed let's be fair next we have female earthlings female earthlings have higher key damage and in my opinion i think this is the worst race option in the entire game Feel free to tell me why I'm wrong in the comments, I won't read them. But in all seriousness though, look, it's the worst option in my opinion, but that doesn't mean to say that it's necessarily a bad option. You've got high key damage, so run with that and go for either Potential Unleashed or probably the Beast Awoken. Because look, out of... Look, I think this is the worst option. So it's like if you want a, an option for like better key damage, go for female sane or maybe freeze race, which is coming up momentarily. So maybe just run the beast of Walking, because if you're running a female earthling, you're pr you probably don't really care, and that's fine. Or rather, you have a different character for more competitive things or when things need to get a bit more serious. And, you know, you need to have a bit more of an advantage with a better custom character. 
race. Moving on now, we have Namekians. Namekians have higher health compared to other races, but I don't believe it's as high as male margins, but it's certainly up there, as well as decent basic attack damage and pretty decent key blast damage, at least decent compared to if you should run key supers or strike supers on a Namekian, you're going to want to probably run key blast attacks. Now, one of their unique traits is that when you have flashing red health, you will constantly recover health naturally, even if you are playing limitations on, you will constantly recover health until you get to the threshold of it no longer being flashing red. Regardless of how many times that happens in a given match, you will always recover health until you are no longer on flashing red health. There's also a unique traits as well, such as I think it's like when you use a an item, like a health item, you get like 20% more efficient or something like that. I forget what it is, but that shouldn't really be too big of a concern given that you've got items. If you are playing you know, with items on either PvE or PvP, items that will recover all of your health, for example. So it's cool, but it's not exactly the most efficient thing or you shouldn't run a Namekian for that reason. Now, in terms of the Walken skill, honestly, Anything apart from Kyle Ken would work. Potential Unleashed is a standard, to be honest. The Beast of Walken could work, and the Turn Giant would be a fairly decent ch you know, choice if you know what you're doing, and if you have, for example, the Golden Grey Tape Baby Vegeta Super Soul, which you can see on the screen right now. This is a raid reward drop by the way. And actually, pretty solid race, all things considered. And finally, we have the Freezer Race. For the freezer race, you're going to have, much like with Saints, lower natural health. So maybe don't run a freezer race with many, if at all, points in health. But again, much like with Saints, you're going to have high basic attack damage. And for females, much like female Saints rather, you'll have higher key blast attack damage. Your speed as a freeze race character will greatly increase when you have lower health. And honestly, I'll say regardless of what race you pick for like normal stuff, I would honestly really, really recommend making and investing time and points and equipment and stuff like that into a key based freezer race build for things like, you know, grinding through pedal quests to unlock stuff as well as gain lots of points in online raids. Great race. Highly recommend that you at least have one freeze race character at all times if you don't already have a freezer race character. And that was a basic introduction to all the races as of right now in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Thank you all for watching. I do hope you found it useful, entertaining, all that good stuff. Don't forget, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And do let me know if I did miss anything in this video and tell me what your favorite race is to use in Xenoverse 2. And once again, thank you all for watching. More videos on the screen right now. I'll see you on one of these videos in a moment.